would be a step in the right direction. Mr. President, I yield the floor. Mr. President, I note the absence of quorum. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Alexander. The Senator from Connecticut. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I ask that the quorum call be lifted. Without objection. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I want to ask uh, if there's unanimous consent that I be permitted to join the resolution that has been offered by Senators Durbin uh, and the separate resolution offered by Senators Collins and Klobuchar relating to uh, the fight against Alzheimer's disease. Without objection. Thank you, Mr. President. All of us have been touched by this dreaded and pernicious disease. Alzheimer's strikes families, loved ones, colleagues, coworkers, friends, acquaintances, literally all of us. And increasingly so, because the numbers are multiplying almost epidemic-like across the country, of course, classifying it as an ep epidemic is difficult to do because we scarcely understand. We are only beginning to comprehend what the causes and the modus operandi are of this pernicious ailment. And I am joining in these resolutions because of the need to express and call attention to the deadly and insidious spread of Alzheimer's and the nation's failure to effectively address it. We know that the numbers of people suffering from Alzheimer's are increasing drastically, and this resolution rightly calls attention to the dimensions of the problem. But as important as those numbers are, even more so, are the numbers of dollars that reflect the nation's failure to take action that is so desperately needed. As my colleague from Maine has highlighted earlier, we spend $500 million in research compared to $6 billion for cancer, $3 billion for HIV, $2 billion for cardiovascular efforts. These numbers do not reflect any excess spending on cardiovascular or cancer or other kinds of medical problems for which the National Institutes of Health does such great work and others in the private sector supported by philanthropy do as well. In fact, if anything, perhaps we should be considering 
expanding those efforts. But the numbers do reflect the disproportion and the inadequacy of what we are spending now. We as a nation are devoting to research into Alzheimer's. The estimate according to the National Alzheimer Project Act and its representatives is in the neighborhood of $2 billion a year as the minimum that we should be spending to develop diagnoses and cures and treatment. And we should be doubling or tripling funding. And yet, even this minimal funding is endangered by the sequester, which has also jeopardize many other research projects supported by the National Institutes of Health. This abdication of responsibility is a tragedy for us as a generation who will suffer from it in untold numbers and for the next generation that could be saved from this disease. And so I'm proud to join in this effort to match the severity of the challenge with public consciousness and awareness and even more important, public dollars and resources that are vitally important to assure that we conquer and cure as much of Alzheimer's as we can, as quickly as possible. We owe it to ourselves and our children. There are many ways in life to feel alone. There are many forms of isolation. Some might say, even in this body surrounded by people, members can be alone at points, alone in championing causes, alone in thought, but there are few conditions that match the aloneness of an Alzheimer's patient, often cut off from the world by an inability to communicate. And we must reach out to those patients who cannot let us know, who cannot describe as they might want to do their aloneness and their resolve. So for them and for all our loved ones and friends and family and co-workers who now and in the future will suffer from the disease, let us resolve in this resolution that we will do more. And as a nation, we will confront this challenge. Thank you, Mr. President. I yield the floor. I suggest the absence of a quorum. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Alexander.
senator from Oklahoma. Mr. President, I ask and ask consent the Quorum Call in Progress be initiated. Without objection. Uh, Mr. President, this has been a long system uh, and, and difficult one for me to go through. Uh, being the ranking member on the Armed Services Committee, I have had constant contact with uh, both the Democrats and Republicans uh, on this bill. I, and I consider this bill to be the most important bill of the year. And I've said that several times. I've given several speeches up here in the last week uh, on this. And I about decided that the last offer that was made by our side was to come up with uh, 50 amendments, limit it to 50 amendments. I, uh, the argument there that it would not be 50 votes. If you look at it historically, and I have the numbers going all the way back for the last uh, 15 years, the, for last year, for example, we had 106 amendments. Uh, only 34 were voice voted and only eight recorded votes. So we're, when we say 50, we're only talking about probably 20. Now, the other, the, of course, the Democrats would want to have 50 also. So what I've decided I'm going to do, because I have to decide what I'm going to do with my vote. I'm either going to vote for or against cloture on the, my own bill. That would be a very awkward thing for me to have to, uh, to, have to determine. But I have tried to get a hold of uh, Pat, uh, Senator Toomey, who is kind of the lead person on the steering committee and the one where most of the amendments would come from, most of the objections have come from. And I have said that if you'll pare that down from 50 to 25, then I'm sure that the, it'd be reasonable for the Democrats to have 25. That's a total of 50. Probably would end up being uh, maybe 20 recorded votes. If you, our Republicans, are willing to bring that number down and say, yes, we will go forward with this bill if we can have, uh, uh, have um, 25, move it down from 50 to 25. Now, if we refuse to do that, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, vote to uh, support um, cloture and to support our, our bill. On the other hand, if uh, Senator Toomey and the rest of the Republicans say no, we want to have uh, all 50, and I look at this list and I see we have some members who have as many as nine, and I don't think that's being totally reasonable. So if they uh, say no, we're not going to bring our, our number down to 25, then I'm going to support the bill. However, if they do agree to bring it down, and I've already uh, talked to the majority side about this, and they refuse to come down to 25, then I would uh, join in uh, opposing the cloture on the, on the bill when it comes up. So I want to make sure that there's no misunderstanding right now. Uh, I'd like to say that I could get a hold of everyone tonight. I've tried. They said that at 7.30 they're going to make a decision. It's 7.29 now, so I had to get on record. I don't have time. I'll repeat it one more time. If the Republicans refuse to uh, bring their number down to 25, and um, then I will go ahead and, and support the bill and support uh, the passage of the bill through cloture. If we, they do agree to do it, and the Democrat side, the majority uh, side, decides that they are not going to accept the 25 offer, then I will oppose and vote against cloture on going to the bill. There you have it. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. President. I suggest the absence of a quorum. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Alexander.
Mr. President. The Majority Leader. I ask you to the call to quorum be vitiated. Without objection. I have a cloture motion at the desk. Clerk will report the cloture motion. Cloture motion. We, the undersigned senators, in accordance with the provisions of Rule 22 of the Standing Rules of the Senate, hereby move to bring to a close the debate on S. 1197, a bill to authorize appropriations for fiscal year 2014 for military activities of the Department of Defense, and so forth, and for other purposes, signed by 17 senators as follows. Reed of Nevada, Levin, Durbin, Kane, Feinstein, Hagen, Mikulski, Donnelly, Udall of Colorado, McCaskill, Coons, Shaheen, Warner, Reed of Rhode Island, Murray, Nelson, King. I ask unanimous consent that the mandatory quorum under Rule 22 be waived. Without objection. I ask consent that we now proceed to pre to morning business. Senators permit to speak up to 10 minutes each. Without objection. Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent the Senate proceed to the immediate consideration of SRS 304, 305, 306, 307, and 308. Is there objection? With that objection, so ordered. Senator will proceed. Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent the resolutions be agreed to, the preambles be agreed to, the motion to reconsider be laid on the table and block with no intervening action or debate. Without objection. I'm told that S1752 is due for its first reading. The clerk will read the title of the bill for the first time. S 1752, a bill to reform procedures for determinations to proceed to trial by court martial for certain offenses under the Uniform Code of Military Justice and for other purposes. I now ask for its second reading, but object to my own request. Objection having been heard. The bill will be read for a second time on the next legislative day. I ask unanimous consent. So when the Senate completes the business day of journal 10.30 a.m. tomorrow morning, that's November 21st, the following the prayer and pledge of the morning arbor deemed expired, the journal proceeding to be approved to date. Time for the two leaders be reserved for the use later in the day. Following any leader remarks, the Senate resumed consideration of the Defense Authorization Act under the previous order, and that the filing deadline for all first degree amendments, desk 1197B, 1 p.m. on Thursday. Without objection. No further business to come before the Senate asks that adjourn under the previous order. The Senate stands adjourned until 10.30 a.m. tomorrow. The Senate today continued work on the 2014 Defense Authorization Bill, which sets defense programs for the next fiscal year.